All right, WVC 1200 micro inverter. This is the uh, latest version of the uh, product. It's got two different uh, lights that uh, indicate uh, function. There's also a very small AC indicator light on both sides. One there, one there, that little dot. It's four input MPPT, maximum 1200 watts output. I've been working with these for about two and a half years now. And I originally planned on going away from them, but actually they, they do what I need to do for the most part. And I'll explain that to you here in a minute. We're going through a, uh, an expanse of our array. We've got six panels installed against our 12 that we originally deployed about a year and a half ago. The first set of panels are uh, Tailsun 290s. And they performed pretty good. They're um, decent construction. And I rated a 290 at STC. The I've got one inverter underneath these four panels. Underneath the inverters right about there. And they all plug into it. One, two, three, four. Same thing with these four inverter, these four panels. I've got an inverter right there underneath there. And the same thing with here. There's an inverter underneath here feeding these four panels. They all jumper together and they're buried in the ground. They go over to feed the house. Now, observing the performance of these inverters, 290 times four is not quite 1200. It's 1160 watts. Um, the, the best performance I've seen out of three inverters is 3000 watts. So it's a little bit less than the 3600 I expect. But the panels are not rated for 3600 watts, so decent performance. Now, that's the upside. <clears throat> the downside is they're uh, passively cooled, so on warm days, even though they're underneath the panels and shielded from sunlight, they do kick off every once in a while when they, they hit a, a temperature threshold and then you're not making juice. So that's the downside. Uh, another upside, though, is they do MPBT per panel. So it tries to, they try to extract the most efficiency out of each panel individually instead of a group of panels, which helps it a lot when they're shading, which I don't usually have shading. I keep things pretty clear in here, although I've got a little bit of trimming I need to do. All right, this is in service, a second generation WVC 1200. <clears throat> One thing I learned about these is if I take panel A here, and I plug it into the first set of inputs. I could see with this panel, I think I saw somewhere in the neighborhood of about 180 watts. Um, it was not 100% uh, insulation, it was a little bit overcast. I was uh, happy with 180 watts. I plugged in the second panel, and then I saw a maximum of 260 watts. So I don't know if the problem there is with the panel or if it's with the inverter itself. I've got to do some A plus B plus C plus D matching and seeing if the inverter is not matching output on each of the four inputs or if the panel is not putting out, if, the, if, the, if these four panels are not putting out the same uh, wattage per panel. They should be, they're new. These are 320 watt panels uh yes 320 and it's right the, the inverter is rated for 1200 watts so 320 is actually overdriving it but you're never going to get anything close to 300 320 watts you get closer to about 280 watts per panel on a 320 and that the inverter will certainly handle 280 watts per input <clears throat> now the first generation in inverters they only have one indicator light to tell you the status of the inverter which is fine the other inverters have two but um, not a big deal. Another thing about these inverters is these connectors tend to break off and that's, that's just under normal use. Um, obviously this is going to cause for concern because that inverter will get loaded up with water and you can see they're, they're broken. Alright, another downside to these inverters. Um, the first three that I ordered they came from China and shipping wasn't ridiculous. It took a week and a half or two weeks, nothing crazy. 
um, but all three of the inverters in, in about the first month they all went bad. <clears throat> one of them was putting out 30 watts maximum, another one was not communicating with my um, data logging software, and the third one was putting out 26 watts. So I had to ship them back to China, and that cost a little over $100 to do that. Then they wanted import fees on the, on the way back when they shipped them back to me. The, the people that fixed them wanted me to pay for the shipping, which I wasn't about to do because they were defective from the factory. In the meantime, I purchased another inverter to have for future expansion. I put it in service, and uh, it doesn't work straight out of the box and I really didn't want to have to mess around with shipping it back to China I was trying to find a place somewhere locally but I ended up shipping it to China they fixed it they sent it back to me it worked for a day and a half and then it failed again they said oh we forgot to do the software update so they wanted me to ship it back to China for another hundred dollars and uh, it's now sitting on my it's been sitting on my bench for about a year and it's not a really good warm fuzzy one when, when the company that manufactures the product don't they don't want to support their product well, it gave me a bad taste in my mouth, but eventually I had to expand my array and I decided to go back with these units because I know they're second generation now and I hopefully they had worked out the bugs. I'll be doing some testing here in the next couple of days to determine if in fact these units are more stable. And again, they're not exactly um, high quality as far as the manufacturer. There's manufacturing defects and, and so forth. Um, one other thing I'm going to have to tell you about them is they're a little bit fragile. I already told you that the connectors break off kind of easily. Uh, this screw here with the circle around it, that was actually uh, not on the inverter. It had fallen off and it was in the packing crate when I opened up the box that it was shipped in. And these screws on the end that, hang, that hold on these angle brackets I had to reverse my angle brackets. They were originally 180 rotated from where I have them right now. And it only has to do with the fact that that's the way I mount them. When you tighten these screws back in, you're going to strip them right out. They are not very strong because, well, obviously they're, they're drilled into this fin here and there's not a lot of meat for that to hang on to. Another thing, if you uh, notice the installation instructions, there's an input there and an output there for the AC. And actually, they're both labeled out, uh, AC, uh, AC output on both sides. It says AC output on this side, and you can't read it real well, but it says AC out here on this side. They want you to daisy chain these. I have it, they would, supposedly because of um, anti-islanding, they want to make sure that uh, all the inverters are in the row so that when the AC power goes out, they, the first one in line shuts down and then it daisy chains and shuts down all the other ones. Well, that's kind of a fallacy because inside the inverter, the AC lines that go from here to here to daisy chain them, they're straight through. There's nothing in there to stop the current from flowing from your grid straight through to the next inverter. There's, there's no break in the AC in here to determine, to send a signal to this one that says shut off. It's straight through. So basically the way I have mine wired is direct home runs from the output to my combiner box, my fuse box, and they're all on breakers individually. Uh, three breakers for this array and I'll add another three for this array, one per inverter. Um, all in all, we'll know in a couple days whether or not this new set, second generation, are a little bit more stable, a little bit more um, efficient than the first generation. If you're looking to do MPPT per panel, it's the cheapest way I've found to do it. Uh, I found these online for $199 plus shipping. Uh, you can get them maybe in a $180 range. Shipping is a little bit higher. And there are uh, vendors that actually ship these out of uh, the states instead of coming from China, so you get it a little bit quicker. We'll know in a couple days when we get the next six panels up. The first six for the second generation array are up. Four right here are currently on a second generation inverter right there and I'll put the second inverter underneath these two the next two will go next to it here and we have this little device that makes putting panels in place real easy and if you're interested in an inexpensive way to mount your panels I've got a 6x6 in the ground 
I've got a pipe at the top that runs the length of the array and unistrut pivots on that pipe so I can adjust for seasonal angle differences with these. They just slide out of there, tilt the panel, and put it in the next hole. Uh, they're solid as a rock, they're inexpensive, the unistrut's not too expensive. Clamps and pipe. And it's been working really well. I've had not any issues at all with these mounts and I probably pay about 60 bucks per mount. So it's, so it's pretty cheap. Alright, well that's the that's the report on the WVC 1200. If you're considering it, great. If you got any questions, drop me a line in the comments below. And I'll report back with another video probably in a couple of weeks to let you know the performance of version 2 of, of these inverters. Thanks for watching.